highlights of my investigation here, in this case, is I'm looking at theory building. So it's it's quite different from the the, the presentation which I've seen before. But we're focusing here on theory building. We have a method, and I'm using action research as a method. Uh, it's a very practical approach. The purpose is to extend the MRT theory with the contextual purpose of micro businesses and Facebook business, which that's the tool which I used. And the implication for this research for micro businesses is that they should not try to jump on to Facebook because it's free and make business pages and all that because it may not be useful for them. And that's one of the uh, major conclusion of this research. The agenda for discussion today would be I have literature review. First, I review the uh, literature on micro business, on media richness theory, that's that's the problems with the theory, and a theory related to that, which is access quality theory, which is an older theory before MRP. Then I briefly touch the research design, which is action research and unstructured interviews and memos, that's what the uh, data collection method, and then finally, the data analysis. And finally, I go on to what is the results of my study, this is the theory development, in which I find out that what is the relevance of access quality theory over the MRT, and then strengths and limitation. So first, the literature review. So far, beginning with the micro business literature, which is not an enormously rich literature here, so quite limited papers, five, ten papers here, and the most important or the problem the situation we found out was that from the literature was that affordability is a very, is a is a big problem for micro businesses. So especially in, affordability here does not necessarily mean that Facebook business page is free to use. So it's not that affordability here comes from the point of view that you have to spend time to use it. You have to you have to update that your content every day, and and that's that's something which is which is time is a resource for the micro business because he or she is doing multiple things at the same time, and 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 that's that's a big issue for them, and also a big issue for the micro business literature in general. Knowledge. So we as university students, you know, we can create Facebook accounts and create their business pages very easily and there's no problem but uh, knowledge is a, is a problem for people who are doing multiple things at the same time they have expertise in something else and they're not sure how to do it go about doing this and they're, they're very concerned with privacy and stuff like that the third point is infrastructure so you have a checkout cash till and you have the you have the you know the laptop and and the uh, and the uh, 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 Facebook business page open and so you, which one you do first? So it's it's a problem here. Some of the some of my participants also had issue of being in the urban in the, in the rural areas, so they don't have uh, broadband. So Facebook doesn't work on dial up. So that's one of the issues. Second point was customer intimacy as such because. Micro businesses are having a set of five, six, ten customers. They focus on these customers. That's their that's their ballpark. So it's not like a, a like a supermarket where you know you have a very large spectrum of businesses, but uh, customers and you I, I, you don't address any one singularly. But here you have you know the customer by name, by face. You 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 you, you can you can greet them. So they have a set of customers here on which the business works and business operates. So do they really need Facebook business? That was the question. And the third part was that, from the literature, is that there are two sort of micro businesses. One is the satisfied owner, so it's a lifestyle thing for him. It's it's a it's a hobby. It's it's a pastime. And another one is the entrepreneur who is in the eternal pursuit of of, of opportunity. So these are the two different type of entrepreneurs, and 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 that's that's uh, from literature we find out uh, this particular uh, differences. Now. Jumping over to the media richness theory, as I call it as MRT, media richness theory has been used predominantly to explain the media choice by individuals. So it says that face-to-face, -face, that is the right now we are communicating face-to-face, -face, is the richest form of communication where I can I can have, have cues, I can I can uh, nod and you can you can nod and we can we are transforming in intense amount of information. And a, a, a unsigned pamphlet is the leanest media. Email is somewhere in the center. Facebook has been now classified somewhere one or two notches below face-to-face -face communication. But there are lots of controversy with this because email can also be used for rich communication. So there are some theories which come up with saying that it's not what you are trying to see, the medium, but the background. People come with a social construction behind it. And when they're communicating, they understand more than what's written in the text, basically. They have a background to it. And 
That's, that's been one of the biggest issues with MRT, not able to explain whether email is lean or rich. According to MRT, email is lean as per the classification, but email can be used for rich communication. So that's, that's, that's one issue that Facebook has been defined as per MRT as one or two notches below face-to-face uh, -face communication. Now, MRT is a part of a theory which is called a trait theory, the characteristics of, of, of information. Information can have, have characteristics like, like richness or acquisition. So there are, there, there, there are two, 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 two schools of thought along with the social presence which says that we are cognitively more associated with, with how close we are. So when we talk on someone on telephone, we say, where are you now? And then you get the context that where they are and then you start talking. So that's the social presence theory. Uh, the oldest theory is, is access quality, which talks about information has got objective classes like relevance, timeliness, accuracy, and there is accessibility, uh, which is basically learning the command language. When you have old computers, you needed to go and type a command, and then you get information. So today, I am converting that command language to saying that when you when you want to use Facebook, you need to have a command language to use it. You need to type type something, and and so that the customers see that and they um, you know revert back to you so there's a common language and the experience as well to use another theory which is prevalent here is social interaction theory which was used to explain the problems with MRT which normally talks about individual differences cognitive biases and and and, and uh, stuff like that there are lots of theories in this area in social interaction theory all particular in in my opinion into, into this particular aspect so the conceptual framework here I'm saying that Excess quality theory will be more relevant than MRT theory, and Facebook is a richer medium. But then, does it does it does it get interaction because of richness? That's a question which we want to answer. The method here, action research. I go and I have ten participants of micro businesses. I go and talk to them. I implement the Facebook business page for them. I help them to run the Facebook business page. It's done over two cycles of canonical action research. I also do participant observation, so I go to the business, I am sitting there and talking to the customers, sometimes talking to the business for, for, for over two hours each shift, and then that's, uh, that's how this uh, process. I generate about 2,000 hours of data for my entire piece. This is of course not for this particular study, but yeah. And the data collection was purely unstructured. I had a conceptual framework in my mind. I knew what I was talking about, but then there was no questions framed or nothing about that, of that sort. And field notes were my primary uh, method of data collection also. I have abstract induction here, so I start with a set of code. Then I transcribe the data. I have field notes. I, I, I you know, I, I, I develop some understanding. I go back to the participants, so that I, I can keep going back to them multiple times. I confirm my findings, and that's why where I came up with this, with this idea that there was an S pause theory and there were theory units, which I will detail in my, in my results now. So first, I found out that the access quality theory was highly relevant. So businesses did not want to learn the command language. So they did not want to gain experience. They were just trying it out because it was there and it was free and I was there and, 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 and they thought it is, it is, it is good, uh, good to use something and which is very new. They were trying to find out if it, if it works more than the email or not and that was their uh, uh, primary objective. The second was that led to reduced quality. So they gave less to it, they got less out of it basically. That's what, uh, what it was. The Facebook richness is again questionable here because like the email, the, the most shared and the most liked uh, 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 post or say communication was, you can get 5% discount code FB05 at the checkout. And this was the most shared rather than the photos, rather than the images, rather than the web links. Or tomorrow is Mother's Day, get one product 50% off and that was the most shared, uh, uh, shared uh, uh, um, communication which liked more, more than 100 likes on that basically so uh, more than 100 comments as well so was it, was, was it the richness which was working or simple text which is also doing the job so, so it, it was a question which, which we carry from, forward from the email richness of MRT problem and finally the S-POS theory versus theory in use 
So we were trying to see if the richness worked, but that was the spouse theory. So that's what we were, and the microbusiness were saying, oh, it is rich, we got to use it, it's more than email. But in really, it's in reality, it was access quality, so they were compromising on the quality and, and they were compromising on the access. Cost was the most important thing for them, and, 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 and that's where they controlled all of those uh, activity. So my results are consistent, MRT theory, email explanation, they are all consistent with, uh, uh, with uh, what what the literature review said. It's an extremely practical approach. I am, I'm, I'm at the field, natural setting. There's no problem. So it's highly relevant. But then again, that's rigor is always a problem So uh, with that. So in action research, we it's not possible to be reliable because I cannot repeat this experiment again in the same setting. It's not possible to step in the same river twice, basically. So uh, validity comes from being, being valid internally and externally. In internal validity, what I'm saying is that the participants could use this tool, and they are still using this tool. So, so I'm valid from that point of view. And external validity is I have I have illuminated a theory. So the MRT theory has been has been illuminated to the context of of micro business and Facebook business page. So that's where we are making a risk free generalization rather than a very broad spread of generalization. And that was the basic purpose of the study. Thank you very much. Tell me a little bit about the businesses. Are they doing a whole bunch of different, are they, are they a whole bunch of different ranges of uh, work? No, no, they are they are very small businesses. Two employees, husband, wife, mother, son, father, brother, and one is a ethnic British food seller. So they sell British food here in New Zealand for the import British food from the US, sorry, from the UK, and, and it's a bit here. The other one is a computer retailer, a very small computer store shop that's used to sell small parts and second-hand computers and stuff like that. Basically. The third one is the cake industry. So they are selling specialty cakes. Been here for 30 years. Mm -hmm. They sell small small cakes, special decorative cakes, you know, those type. And the fourth one is a beautician. So she has the beauty treatments like, like that. They are single business, very small business. They all have retail outlets inside inside uh, Hamilton at this point in time. Do you think when you were using that one example of saying how uh, you know the, the most shared uh, you know uh, 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 information that was on their Facebook page was that one you know 50% off or whatever. Do you think that um, with your research that it would have been possible to somehow even uh, um, that maybe there's there that even though that was the most liked that maybe there's external factors within that um, one. Uh, Upload that one, that one day or fifty percent off, where maybe that relates back to the Facebook page and relates to other forms of media that are that that are connected to that. That may not have may not have been available if there wasn't a Facebook page. See what I'm trying to say? I could say that if they would have done an email to their customers saying the same thing, they would have probably got the same sort of sale. The, what what Facebook did was probably the interactive capability to explore the uh, virality of the system. So when they like their friend's seat and they like their friend's seat and so on and so forth basically. So uh, yes, uh, in that sense, uh, other media would have been a bit limited in that aspect. But here, it, it, it probably gone viral, but I could not measure the virality mm -hmm. at that point of time because it's co quite hard to do that as your other friend was mentioning that it, it's quite hard to uh, go on to that aspect basically because it gets to distorted after, after some point of time. Mm -hmm. Though I am admins for these pages, I can see the statistics, I can, but you know, it gets quite hard to do observe it after a certain point, yes. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. Um, with these uh, micro-businesses, um, any, have there, any of them been inspired to do more experimentation with, with using Facebook about the experience that you've, that you've given them? Um, when the whole process followed, when I started with them, um, you know, I I had planned a standard action research cycle, and you know, I said I was hoping they would start just just jump and start using it, but then nothing happened for one month. It was silent. So then I went back, and, and, and then they came up with this problem of, that, oh, we have nothing to say, you know, uh, I have stopped coming in once in once in two months or three months, and I have nothing to say basically. So then. Um, I decided that something has to be done. So then that's when I began the partisan observation part of it. And uh, I almost visited them every week 
and try to come up with some ideas on what to do, what not to do. And so I kept probing them continuously throughout the period. So this I did for the first five minutes. This is not a part of the paper, but for the first five minutes, the rest five minutes I didn't do that basically. So they have all stopped the Facebook business pages altogether. So yes, it took a lot of effort at the first, at the beginning, to get them going. And even now, the frequency is not that high. Albeit, there is some frequency, but not that high. Um, once in a week, but that's good enough for me. Yes, as a, as, as a <laughs> successful result. Yes. Yeah. Chris, Facebook's quite a, a different sense of interaction, and. Um, all of the users, both the micro businesses and the customers, might take a while to get around the heads around the possibilities of, of developing networks and communities around those kind of transactions. So yeah. it might be that they're, they're slightly ahead of, of their their uh, customer Plus, base in yeah. a sense. Yeah. 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 And I think the deals work the best. You know, five percent, two percent, they work the best. So that's that, that's one of the most hard, uh, quick selling aspect of Facebook. The lights go out very quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Questions? Um, just one really quick one. Um, we can test it. Um, <coughs> I was wondering, with, because they're micro businesses, uh, do you think they're just time poor? Do you think it's just Facebook is just another thing that they just don't have time to do properly? Yes. Yes. It's, it's a primary, which I mentioned from the theory. Affordability is affordability. And that is time. Time is a very important resource for them, and they do multiple things at the same time. It's almost almost impossible for them to, you know, spend time, develop a content, become a publisher. You know, so most of them, I know, I have got comments saying that, well, radio is much simpler. Why don't we just use it? You know, I mean, uh, why don't, why do I bother coming up with all this, you know, uh, links and all that, all that things? So it is, it is a very big issue, time. I think for small businesses and larger businesses, they can appoint people who have just that job basically. But here, they are multitasking, so time is a very big issue for them. Yes. Yeah, I think your study is quite significant in sort of adding to that whole digital divide, sort of discrepancy that's happening. Yes. People that it's easy to do this stuff, but good for whom it's not. Yeah, and also, two of my participants there is for the lifestyle business for them rather than a, a you know, full-time business. So that was also a difference that two of my participants are very, you know, so relaxed that, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I think third one had, they've been in business for 30 years, you know, they, they never use any advertisement at all. It's a word of mouth. So my son has got a birthday, so the cake comes from the same shop and then the other sons came from cake, so it's the same thing. So it's like that. So, uh, so it's quite hard for them in that sense. Basically.